Today we're in Bardstown, and that's not the only store that this cat has got. This is Barry yes, Collier. Now the first thing I found out about you was from Facebook. That's right. Somebody said, there's a fish truck coming to Frankfurt. Yes, sir. What kind of fish, where are they from, how fresh are they, so on and so forth. So I started looking at the reviews. Yes, sir. And every one of them were top reviews. So I thought, I'm going to try this. I got to try this because I love my seafood. You know, right. I like to go down and catch myself. But by the time I get back, it's already, you know, because I spent a week down there, it's already <laughs> 10 days old. So I thought, I'm going to try to see how fresh this is. Well, I just got to tell you, best seafood I've had that I didn't catch myself, and it's right up there with it. How did this whole Gulf Coast connection thing begin? I fished for a living probably 20 years. That's, that's all I really did. Right. And about two or three years ago, started on um, trying to sell them myself. It's a longer process than what it seems like. I can't just catch that fish, throw him in my truck, take him up here. I have to catch that fish, take him to the processor myself. We stand there with them to make sure we get our fish back. Then we got our own reefer truck. We throw our fish back on our reefer truck after they process them. And then we carry them and distribute them to our stores. All our fish are caught in one day. My boat don't even have a cabin or a bathroom on it. <laughs> and most of, our, uh, most of our fish are done in six or eight hour days. We catch most of wow. our fish. So this fish right here was swimming a couple days ago? Yes, sir. You said more than likely your daughter caught that one. Uh, my daughter was on the boat with me when we caught that one. Now, if I walk my eyes to the left, we see crab legs. Now, I know you're yes, not sir. catching them unless you're up there no. in the Bering Sea. <laughs> but, no. I mean, you, you, whatever you got fresh, you got sources for that? No, the, the crab legs come in frozen. All your crabs have to be cooked alive, any kind, any gotcha. kind of crab. You don't ever want a raw, uncooked crab. You're, uh, most, of the, most of the crabs are cooked on the boats. Wow. And then they're processed there and then they fly them all over. Where's your lobster from? The, these lobster right here are warm water tails. We get them, sometimes they come from the Keys, sometimes they come from Costa Rica. Gotcha. Just depends. I like the, the flavor of a rock lobster. I do too. But to me it's a lot better. I actually like... I'm not big on a cold water lobster. I like diving for them. Yeah. So you got... Now, but right here is all you. The fish. The fishing part is what you catch. Your snapper the other day was ridiculous. Yes, sir. Well, you got an amberjack back here. Yes, which, sir. Which now let's let's talk a little bit about the amberjack. Now yes, I fished sir. for them back in the day. Right. Oh, that ain't worth eating. They throw it back. What has changed? I don't know if it's the the different ways people cook it now or what, but um, the season's very short on them. We mm -hmm. get a season in January and February, and then it closes down because they spawn in March, April, and May. And then it opens back up in June, but there's usually not much quota left for us to catch. Um, so it's kind of like some fish around here, some stripers and stuff. Cut the red meat out and you're good to go. It does have red meat on the skin. I think if you was to take it and fry it, it probably wouldn't be very good if you take it off. But Amberjack's a good bit cheaper than snapper whole. Right. But once you once you clean, you can take that snapper and clean it and use the whole thing. On that one, you gotta cut so much meat off of him that isn't it, that isn't that good, to where whenever we give you the good piece, the finished product costs about the same as a snapper. But it's good stuff. Yes, sir, it's very good when smoked, saw, grilled, yeah. baked. As we're going over, we see uh, assorted shrimp, and that's yes, all sir. coming from all Bal Daniel. Bayula Bantry, Alabama. Gotcha. Then we got our crayfish over here. Those come from Pierre Port, Louisiana. Then I see some smoked tuna dip. Yes, sir. Which I'm going to have to try because that's right up Nikki's alley. She's got to try that. And that's you actually fish for some of those fish to we do fish to for provide tuna. for that outfit. We do fish for tuna. I haven't done it much lately because we got our hands full on this. But in the past, we caught a lot of the tuna that we sold to that guy. He made the tuna dip, sold it back to us. That is so cool. Now, it's fresh smoke. Where are your locations at? Tell us exactly where your locations are. We got one in Paducah, Kentucky, 3250 Lone Oak Road, Elizabethtown, Kentucky, 321 South Mulberry Street, 1482 Boston Road for this one. Now, today, because I have fished for Amberjack and I have eaten it in a restaurant, sometimes mistakes or a lack of having certain things leads to some good recipes. How did you find out the best recipe for this amberjack? We were out one time and we broke out the grill and we cleaned the fish and we realized we didn't have anything to cook with. <laughs> we dug around, we found a can of Tony seasoning. I'm sure everybody you knows what that is. You gotta have some Tony. And the guy said, hey man, I've heard this will create a seal. He took mayonnaise and rubbed it all over the fish and rubbed it in good and sprinkled the Tonys on it. I don't know if it's because we were out on the boat and hadn't ate all day or what, but it's the best fish I've ever had, grill. We're about to find out exactly what that tastes like because we're going to try exactly that. I got a brand new grill I'm kind of proud of. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. We're going to take you. a look around if you don't mind. Yes, sir.